Today's video is something a little different, something we've never done before. We're going to be taking the top 20 Wonder Kid strikers in FM23 and putting them into a tier list. As you can see, we've got five different tiers, so we'll be able to see which Wonder Kid striker is going to come out on top. We've got the GOAT tier for the best of the bunch. We've got the best of the rest. Pretty good, hype's gone, and unusable. Whether that's because you can't really sign them for five years into the game or their price is far too high, anything like that, we're going to consider all of it in this video. Like I say, this is something we haven't really done before, but if you guys enjoy it, let us know by smashing the like button and do let us know in the comments your thoughts as well. I mean, if you guys like it enough, we'll do this for every single position. Maybe we'll do center backs, midfielders and all of that good stuff. So if you do enjoy it, let us know and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But with that being said, let's get right into it, shall we? Our first player is Gabriel Vidovic, who you can see here. This Croatian 18 year old is technically playing for Bayern Munich, but he is on loan at Vitesse Arnhem in the Eredivisie in the first season. I did a save with them a long time ago and that's why I have their shirt on the wall behind me. But he is a real talent and if we're talking potential ability rating, he has got one of the best in the game. Now he's not necessarily an out and out striker. I do really like him but because of his price, I'm going to put him in the pretty good section. You can't get him in the first season. He's expensive after that. He is a good player but maybe not the best wonder kid option out there. We have got 20 players to go through here so I'm going to speed through pretty quick but our next one is Rodrigo Ribeiro. He's a 17-year-old Portuguese striker who plays for Sporting CP and has a great set of attributes outright. He's actually in their B team at the start of your saves and he doesn't cost all that much if you can approach him. A high potential ability rating, someone who doesn't cost all of that much, I think he's another one that can go in the pretty good tier. Our next player is a striker from Tottenham and there's a couple of them in this list. It's Jamie Donnelly who does have good potential this year but he starts off as a 17-year-old that seems to have not the best attributes in the world. Because he's at Tottenham at an English club and he's an English youngster, his price is really inflated too, so he's not one that you can really go out and sign. And whilst it's a bit harsh to put him there, I'm personally going to put him in the unusable section because of those reasons. Now, of course, this is all my own opinion. So let me know if you think I've got any of these drastically wrong. Next, we have Benjamin Sesko. Now, he is a phenomenal player. We all know that. And I absolutely loved him on every single football manager game that he's been on up until this point. Now, I still think he's a very good option. But when you start, obviously, you've got a year of him being at Salzburg before his move to Leipzig kicks in. Then he won't be able to sign for anyone because he's stuck at Leipzig, at which point you're talking about a Sesco in his early 20s playing for one of the biggest clubs in the Bundesliga. He's going to command an extremely high price and while it might seem a little bit harsh to say because of that reason I'm going to put him in the hype's gone. Don't get me wrong there's still a lot of hype. The guy is going to be a superstar in the future but in terms of signing him in Football Manager I feel like that hype has passed a little bit and whilst we're on the subject of those kind of players I think I'm going to do Fabio Silva next. Now he for me is in the exact same region. It's hype's gone and whilst he's still does have excellent potential in Football Manager. He's currently on loan and elect in the game. I believe in real life even that didn't work out and he's now at PSV. I don't know the exact reasons for it, whether it was form or just didn't work or whatnot, but he is now in the Eredivisie. Obviously Wolves have paid 50 mil for him, so if you did try and sign him a year down the line, Wolves aren't going to want to lose most of that transfer fee, so he's very expensive. I don't see many people signing him anymore. And for me, the hype has kind of passed on Fabio Silva this FM. The next player I'm going to choose is V Vitor Roque. Now I'm putting him in the best of a rest because I don't feel like he's the best of the best this year, but Vitor is such an excellent player in this year's Football Manager. If you haven't seen my Wonder Kid to Superstar on him, watch him. It's like having a mini R9 in your team. He's also fairly available because he is in the Brazilian divisions. His price isn't that expensive for the player you get, and he can play in most teams in world football. So I'm definitely sticking him up there. Next, I'm going for Benfica's Henrique Araujo, who as well is going to go in the best of a rest category for me. Great attributes not too high of a fee and available in most of your saves can play at the highest level straight away but the reason I'm putting him here is recently I did a Benfica rebuild on my channel which if you want to check out you can find that linked in the description any support we massively appreciated he went on to be one of the best strikers in world football he's that good he really can be top draw and like I say his attributes right from the bat are still very very good so I'm a big fan of him and he is going in the best of the rest next is Santos's Marcus Leonardo now I like him and he is a wonder kid that's been around FM for years with great potential. My only issue with him is he doesn't really suit 
the kind of roles that seem to be effective in FM. That being said, any role can be made effective, of course, but his ideal role in FM is a poacher. Now, for me, I just don't feel like poachers are a meta this year, and I think for that reason, a lot of people might choose other options over him. So I am going to put him in the pretty good section, but I'm not going to put him in the best of the rest. I know a lot of people will complain about that. I know a lot of people love him, but for me, he's going there. And I think from now, I'll just work backwards from this side. Next, we've got Leeds is Joe Gelhart, who does have great potential potential but being an English striker in the Premier League he is going to cost you quite a lot when the January transfer window update comes out Gohart will actually be on loan at Sunderland I believe but if we're talking in FM terms if you wait a year or so you can sign him he can be great and he can go on to be an England international very comfortably if you give him the chance to develop so for that reason I'm putting him in the pretty good category doesn't quite cut it for the best of the rest for me but someone who does is our next player John Karikabaru who was brilliant last year and this year he's even better I think he's just a ready-made star a little bit older than some of the others if I'm remembering correctly he plays for Real Sociedad as a striker has great attributes all around and usually instantly in your save he'll be wanted by some of the biggest clubs in the world your Man United's your Arsenal's your Real Madrid's all of them are interested in this guy usually because he has got bags of talent and his price point is very low for the player you get in if as a player I was going to suggest to you guys that you might not have looked at from this video go check him out because I really think you'll enjoy playing with him and then we've got Dane Scarlett now he's an interesting one he used to be very very good on football managers in years gone by he'd be in the best of the rest when he was 16 years of age you could get him for super cheap but at this point he's an 18 year old striker at Spurs who hasn't quite made it just yet and he's gone on loan to Portsmouth give it a year of playing at Portsmouth he'll be 19 and his starting attributes aren't great and whilst he does have a lot of potential I don't really see him as that option that a lot of people would go for anymore. I think there's so many better options out there and whilst it might seem a little bit harsh, I'm going to put him in the unusable section. He's better than Jamie Donnelly, I think, but just I wouldn't pick him over many of the others here. I am a Chelsea fan, so there might be some bias in this. It's not intentional. I do apologise Spurs fans for putting both of your guys at the bottom, but I just don't see either of them as really, really solid wonder kid picks that you should definitely go for. And unless you were maybe a championship side wanting a striker on loan in season two or three, I don't think anyone's really going to be signing him. Again, though, this is all my opinion. So you guys let me know if you think any of these are completely wrong. I'm sure we'll get a lot of people in the comments saying, oh, this one's wrong. This one's wrong. We've all got our own opinions. And I think I'm going to cause some upset with the next player, which is Jao Pedro. Now he has phenomenal attributes, but he's now 20 years of age and he's still at Watford in the championship. On my says, they've always got a 30 million pound price tag slapped on him. And in some of them, he goes on to win Ballon d'Ors. In others, he never leaves Watford or never really makes it out of that kind of level of football. So he's a really polarizing one. But again, for that price point, for the player you're getting, I think there's much better options out there now. I think he's kind of past his sell-by date in terms of being that must-have wonder kid that he was a few years ago. I reckon he's one of them players that you wait a couple of years and then maybe sign if he's doing well. But for me, for that reason, I'm going to put him in hype's gone. Again, that doesn't mean I think he's absolutely terrible or anything like that. I just feel like there's a lot better options out there. These guys have already made their expensive moves in football. And for that reason, they're very hard to get nowadays. Next, we have Bulgarian striker Nick. Nikola Ilyev, who you might not have heard of out of anyone on this list. He plays for Inter Milan and he has some great attributes right from the off. Now his potential isn't close to anyone else in this list. The height of his potential range is 160, so way less than anyone else, but he is available on an approach to sign deal and he does have some good attributes right from the off. So really he's not going to cost you anything at all. He is willing to negotiate on the approach to sign, which a lot of players aren't. And for that reason, I think he's a pretty good pick. I don't think you're signing him as Real Madrid and United, but maybe if you're a high level champion, Championship club, low level Premier League, looking for someone to develop into a top player in a few years, then he could be your man. Next, we've got Stoke City's Emre Tezgel, the 16 year old English striker, and I'm not too sure where to put him, to be honest. Maybe best of the rest, maybe pretty good. He'd be very high on the pretty good list, but low on the best of the rest. In the Wonder Kid to Superstar, he became such a good player that I think I need to put him in best of the rest because even though he is pricey, if you can get him and give him some game time, he can become one of the world's best players because he starts with a great base set of attributes at 16 and you can really mold him into whatever kind of strike you want. So for that reason, he's going best of the rest. Next, we've got Karim Kanate. We're flying through these picks. He's fairly cheap at Salzburg. You will have to wait a little bit of time before you sign him because he is a new sign-in 
for that club, but he has the potential to be world class. He does. He's got that great base set, a really good physical presence up front with great attributes in that physical department straight away, which only get better. Again, the price point's nice. So for that reason, he's going in the pretty good tier. Now, though, we have Wilfred Nonto. I feel like Nonto, we're going to put him pretty good purely because he's still quite young and he's got that electric pace. After a year or so at Leeds, he will be available to sign if you want him. He's going to cost you a pretty pricely sum, but he is an Italian international at such a young age still has some great attributes great potential and a lot of room to grow so for me he can go in the pretty good section next we've got Stad René's Kulimendo who is a brilliant striker that they've recently signed from Paris Saint-Germain great attributes one of the most overpowered strikers in the game he does come very pricey though and for that reason, I'm going to just take him out of the best of the rest and put him as the best pretty good option. He can be 20, 25 million and you'll have to wait a year before you can even think about signing him. But if you can get him, you're set up for the future. A very, very strong technical player. He's got a lot of ability, plays for France's under 21 side. In terms of completeness on this list, I would say he's right at the top in terms of those attributes. So for that reason, very high in the pretty good list, but his price kind of rules him out of the best of the rest. Final three players now. One of these is the GOAT and you can probably imagine the two that I'm going to have to decide between. But our third to last player is going to be Matthias Tell of Bayern Munich, a recent signing for them, who is for me more a wide player than he is a striker. A good option, fairly expensive, kind of already part of Bayern's first team. Wouldn't really put him in the hype gone section just yet, but he is a pretty good option. I do like him. But when it comes to a list of wonder kid strikers to sign, I don't think he quite makes the cut as one of the best. And now we get to the big decision. Who is the GOAT? Yusuf Mokoko or Endrick? For me, this year, I can't really look past Endrick. I know there are some issues with him in terms of signing him if you're a Premier League club because of his age, of course. And I know in the winter update that they do that he will be set to join Real Madrid. But as of right now, you're looking at one of the best wonder kids in FM history in terms of potential. He's got attributes some of these players could only dream of at the age of 15, which is insane. He's got so much potential. And considering he might go on to be one of those unattainable players at Real Madrid from this point on in FM, I'm happy we've had the chance to sign him. £15 million or so for this kind of player is an insane deal. So he's going to be my GOAT and Mokoko can be one of the best of the rest. But I really don't think he's that far apart from some of these guys. I know he does have great potential, but of course he is pricey. He usually will sign that contract with Dortmund. And I think in real life he signed it. So he won't actually run out of contract in the summer the way that he does in FM22. In FM23, still a very good option, mind you. But someone like John Kurika Baru signing him straight away, you really won't look back. So Mokoko, a great Great player, but I don't think he's completely set apart from some of these. And that is my FM23 Wonder Kid Striker tier list. Now, this isn't something that we've really done before, so I want you guys to let me know if you have enjoyed watching, if it's something you'd like to see more of. We can do other positions as well. If you have enjoyed it, smash the like button and let us know in the comments which of my picks do you not agree with. Subscribe if you want to see more like this, but thank you for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.